Hi. Hello. Happy Friday. Sun's shining. Beautiful day. Um, outside with the beer later. If it all good, is it? <laughs> anyway, we're doing a lovely picture of Amalfi Coast. Can't wait to go back. I've never been actually, but I've been to Italy. But the Amalfi Coast is a place I want to go. Um, I know some people have been and they love it. So, yes, when all this is over. Anyway, this is the only image I could get that uh, off the internet. A lot of these pictures, photographs, I just pinch off the internet and you know, we're not kind of selling them really. Unless they're my own images, then I can sell them. Uh, you can't sell my images really, but I don't mind that much unless you ask me. Anyway, you're supposed to be um, mentioning the photographer, but I don't need to this, so I can't mention anything. But it's just a very kind of abstract image, yeah. And I don't want everybody doing every window, door, uh, tree, you know. So that's why I don't, I can't provide a fabulous image that you can stick on the side of a bus, you know. So anyway, I'm sorry, specifically, sorry about that. But uh, this is it. And that's my size of image. And I've not got my glasses on. And I can work from that. But when I put my glasses on, I can see more buildings. Oh my, loads of buildings. You know, so really you don't need a lot. Anyway. Because we're using collage and acrylic, it's kind of abstract. Uh, palette knife, um, uh, if you want to use palette knife, no, you've got my board out. And I've got um, <coughs> my trays out as well. Tissue, uh, newspaper, I might go and buy a paper this morning, just so I can stick it on my painting. So I'll put that there. Um, quite a few brushes, in case we need them. And then, um, yeah, nice big palette knife in case I need that. Uh, you do need water, you need a cloth. Colours are the same. Uh, burnt sienna, alizarine crimson, ultramarine blue, uh, phthalo green, cerulean blue, and cadmium yellow, um, or violet bright. It's not cadmium yellow, it's processed yellow, which is stronger and white. All right. So I can, uh, I'm going to put a background on this. Uh, when we do pile up, I don't use the put a background. But I'm going to make depth. So I'm going to go from blue to, to warmth, okay? Not disregarding trees, buildings, anything like that. Uh, just having a kind of depth in the picture before we actually start painting. Uh, I must say, there's some lovely Painters of the back of that lady's head, which you put on, so well done. Not as easy as it looks, is it? No. Would you like to do the eyes, nose, and mouth, or would you like to do the back of somebody's head? It's very good, actually, you can get a really nice effect. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on from that, mixed media, kind of using other things along with just acrylic paint to create something aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so there we go. Um, Got quite a bit of gardening this week, so quite a bit to do. Do you like my new t shirt? Well, it's not new, Winsor Newton gave it to me. Okay, I've not worn it yet, so it's got to just on the, on the back as well. Hope there's no swear word. Anyway, I'll put my penny on, undo it first, and then uh, get my big brush, plenty of water, or water, as they say in, in um, Yorkshire. Plenty of water and then brush it on the paper. I'm just using normal paper, no acrylic gesso, because, like I've explained before, I, I know some people can't hear me that well, so I'm picking up putting some earplugs in actually, so I can shout a bit louder because uh, when you've got earplugs in, you can't, uh, you don't know your loud devices, so I'll stick an earplug in. And then I'll start shouting, all right, there you go, <coughs> I can hear myself now, um, yeah, so, colour on first, blue to warm, 
And I'll show Jazz and say we could do a couple of entries. You can have orange against the blue to green or red in your foreground. You can do the same thing. I've got my big brush, okay? Uh, I'm starting with cerulean because cerulean's a lovely kind of warm blue, continental colours. And then as I'm coming down, I'm going to add ultramarine to that, okay? And mix it on the paper ah, and let it blend. Saturate some of the colours in the clouds and the, the landscape. Then as I'm coming forward, I'm going to add some green to that, which is the green here. You see? So it's dead easy today. Maybe I'll get outside in the sun, do a bit of gardening. And as I'm coming forward from the green, I'm going warm. Now, if you look at these buildings, there's warm ones and there's also cool ones, isn't there? Like that. And then we're going warm still because we're going yellow. Which is here. So there's my depth, okay? Warm to cool. A bit more sienna. Beautiful. And then we'll sketch it out. I'll dry it off a little bit. But because that's on um, normal paper, sunk in and dry quite quick. Uh, get my hair dry on the job as well. Can you hear me? Good. Yeah, oh, I best pull this back a bit actually, so you can see more of the picture. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. There's the job. Hard stretch the uh, the paper. Can't go properly. Dude. I've got plenty of uh, colours on there, and I'm going thicker with the pen, and I'll take some more texture. Okay, I'll do that and first. Make sure you dry the, um, the tape off, so you can stick it, and then it can stick back again. Otherwise, it's wet. It's a bit there, okay. Like that. Dry it. Uh, just take the tape off the bottom. Like uh, here you go, in the corner. And, uh, and then we can pull it. You can kind of pull it from a corner across the picture, like that. Okay. Um, and then pull it in the centre. I'll get rid of the middle bubble. And then pull it from this way. And that. Like that. We had to just stretch in the paper slightly uh, because it's good tape. It'll hold as it dries. Okie dokie. Lovely. Now I'm going to use some uh, thicker pigment. Got a nice thick, big brush again. And I've got some texture so I have to put in. In this foreground area, we actually want warms and we need some trees, so I'm going to put in, you, know, you have to put paint underneath, and we need it to be kind of slightly darker. Uh, so this is just paper, um, kitchen roll actually. We can add a bit of sienna to our green as well, that will give us some darker tones. That will keep the colour of your picture. Um, over the top, okay, like that. And you get these crinkly bits, which is quite nice. Get the air bubbles out if you can. Like that, just to kind of pull some out. You get air bubbles in the middle. And as we're coming forward, I'm going to add some more greeny blue. So here we can have a bit of texture there because we've got some in the landscape. And the distance, all right, like that. Slap it all over, um, and then nothing too much. You can put some in the background later. So these ones we need. So we'll keep that uh, newsprint. 
And it says you've got a lot of buildings. Uh, the majority of them all are in this kind of section. Has some nice textures. Um, big brush again. Put it away. Rip little portions up. Uh, slap it in. And then put your new print in. Uh, you can have big areas. Don't forget to put the colour on first. Uh, you need this colour to stick it. Otherwise, it won't stick. And then here we've got a kind of a shape that's, if I can see this section, nice and dark. So I'm going to put that um, dark zone, which is blue, a bit of a lizardine or purple. And it's actually about here. So I can just slap that on. Technical term, slap it on. And then keep that nice and watery. Uh, big areas of purples. Mm. Whatever you've got, dark tones, blue, green, over the top, like that. You can do a bit of splattering if you want. Whatever you put in now, it's going to help later. Lovely kind of simplified version of what you're looking at. That's what we're after. Get uh, simplicity. Nothing kind of fussy. Alright. I deliberately put a drip in there, I don't know why. Uh, here, a bit more green texture. I think we'll have a bit more, because we've got this lovely kind of, uh, these tree shapes here. So I've got this bit, which is this, and then up here we've got this other. So I'll put that in, going to the top of the mountain. Right, lovely curve, which acts as this, you see? I'm just doing a very abstract version of what I'm actually looking at. Some of these warms are going to help with positioning of buildings. <coughs> um, I did have two credit cards ready. Put them on the left for them. There you go. There you go. Um, if you're quick enough, you can kind of scratch out things. There could be buildings in the distance like that, you know, that are just faint marks on the side of the hill. You see what it does? It actually saves you painting them later. Uh, anything that makes it easier. As I just show you that, um, mixture of earth sienna and a bit of white. Too many brushes in there actually. Uh, a bit of white. Yellow, put it on your credit card, uh, just get some of these sections that are uh, uh, nice and light. I see where the cliffs are, and then we can add a bit of warm color to that as well. Um, just for these areas, uh, just the warmth, okay. Coming out, nice and abstract version, okay. Uh, when we're doing the, the um, hillside, we're going to add a bit more. You can put it on your palette like that. Get your brush and then pick it up with your palette, with your, um, your, your, uh, your brush like that. Or you can pick it up with your credit card. It's not credit card actually. So here we've got these lovely kind of shapes. And it's picking up on the tops of the um the brain's not working again. I'm so um, the tops of these lovely trees in the distance. Alright? Alright, moving on. Get your big brush out of the way, we don't need that anymore. Start big, work small. Start big, then go small. All right. Stand back. A bit of blowing, just to create texture. Also stops drips. Lovely landscape, actually. It's a, it's a lovely version of what we are looking at. All right. Uh, keep these 
This is my favourite brush, I've mentioned it before, which is an island one. Okay, it is an acrylic brush. Uh, it gets bubbles out as well of your paper. And it also creates these lovely shapes like this. Now because I've got that many buildings here, I have not a clue where they are or what they're doing. Yeah? But I do know that. Uh, there are all these different shapes. So if I get some sienna mixed with my white on my palette, like that, yeah, and then I'm looking at these angles, and I want the brush again to be the texture of uh, the rocks and things like that. Yeah. And they're going in certain directions, they're coming down. As well, you're getting angles, shapes. We've also got blue shapes, so you get your cerulean blue, pick up some white, start looking around here. Yeah, you can see where that you've got these shapes like houses that are actually in the shadow. So, if I use the side of the bush to put in a few of these. Houses, yeah, like that. So I'm coming up to the uh, section that's got to uh, add windows to these blobs. Technical term is blobs. And we also add dark shapes. We just want an impression, impression of what you're looking at. Yeah. So we can paint the background as well. I'm letting that dry a little bit. <coughs> I'll look into my background at the top. So I've got some uh, bird sienna cerulean and I'm just going to go around this coast, this sky area, uh, mix it together like that and that will give you this lovely kind of shape. Add more cerulean blue like that to give us our mistress. Yeah. And you're also getting it uh, slightly lighter as you come down to uh, this area. So it's cerulean blue and then uh, white. Because you've got a couple of things going on there. When I create that misty kind of landscape that comes from about here. Yeah, nice cliff coming down there. Uh -huh. And then that's kind of disappearing. Again, people who buy blending mediums, you know, you can do this with oils without blending medium. But if you buy blending mediums for acrylic, it takes some getting used to actually. You don't have to. Just use thick paint or very watery pigments. So I'm looking at the kind of the shapes on these cliffs, yeah. And then coming across, I'm going slightly bluer again. And you can just kind of, you can see, blend it together with your brush. Every now and again, pick out a bit of a land, a bit of a, a shape that is part of the picture. You can see, something like that. Uh, just add more white as you kind of paint around an object. Yeah. So I'm going off the picture, and I've also squared my, my piece of paper. So it's not uh, oblong, if you know what I mean. Quite interesting shape. <coughs> Big areas of dark snow. So I'm using a palette knife. Pick up some alizarine, put it on the board, pick up some blue as well. Ultramarine. Okay. Uh -huh. And you can have green with that as well. Green and red and blue. Okay. And as you look over this section where your paper is, and there's really nice shapes. Okay. Uh, and then you get your rocky bits. Can you see where the you get these rocky areas? So the side of this cliff is kind of darker. And then it comes, you're getting these shapes. So where the cliff is, there's a bit more blue. Bit more green, 
and that bit of red mix it together with palette knife and we're using these lovely it doesn't have to be spot on it can be in the right vicinity but all it matters okay and then we add a few buildings later so these are coming down to the shapes that are just above the buildings actually every now and again if you want to pick something up that's an important feature if you like uh, it's like when you look at these cliffs they got these dark shapes uh, shadows yeah like that and around buildings things like that marks here buildings shadows around trees like this uh, i don't put any windows in yet we don't want windows yet uh, purple and blue mixed together to make um, alizarine and blue mixed together to make purple and we're getting these really nice darks in um, again using your palette knife for is it? picking up this great beautiful see the alizarine is quite nice because it's uh, dark against your green so when you mix some as well you get a really nice strong dirt, okay? Mix them together on your palette first before you put them on. And then look at the shapes in your picture. Try and just hit the tops of the collage, the paper, rather than you know, trying to paint leaves. There's no chance. They're too far away. So we just kind of look at the shapes of some of these trees. Okay. Don't forget the tops of the trees. You will have shadows around the tops of trees, won't you? Yeah? And we've not finished with it because we're going to add um, more, more colour later, lighter colour. So we can go over it with lighter tones, can't we? So here, look at these sections, one blends into another. Then we're going into where the houses are, coming down there like that. We can do a bit of splattering, don't forget splattering techniques. Uh, a bit that will come loose, stick it down. It's going to get varnished anyway, you know, so it's not going to come off. Here we've got more detail because there's a few bigger houses. If you want to pick up some white with a bit of sienna, uh, just for these and the houses, bigger shapes. Okay, the sunlight's coming from one direction. Like this. You can also do it with your credit card, you can also do it with blues. So we've got the blue ones, blue and white mixed together there. So we get these sections of blue houses like that <coughs> especially on the side of the hill down there uh, where you're getting the land behind the trees there's a lovely tree there actually pick a small brush up rough textured one this one yeah scrunch it pick up some green add some blue just about here We've got a tree just behind that building and as we're coming up here it's going a little bit darker you see uh, inside the landscape we've got other other kind of shapes uh, the texture of that paper i'm just going to leave that because I, I like it i like it <clears throat> adding your cerulean blue and your green Touches of white as well, and gives this kind of mistiness, yeah. Uh, over your collage in the valley, yeah. So keep it nice and misty in the distance. Squid, take glasses off. Stand back, yeah. All the time it's dry, yeah. Again, I'll show you. Try to pick up some white. 
Sorry, clean white. Clean white, because here it's uh, scumble. Is it scumble? Lovely word. Scumbling. Side of the mountain. Don't forget this is an actual place, so you want that mountain to look like the actual place. And then just blends into the rest. You can glaze it. This is that. You can use a bit of kitchen roll that we did with this. Just add sections, great stuff. Right. Paint all over. Top next. Uh, a blending. Lovely. <coughs> Put that in the bag. Need a bigger table actually. A bit of um, green. Let me create on the um, put it all over my even kitchen roll. Use kitchen roll if you want to, just to give you textures. Put it on, take it off. You can also use the back of a piece of paper. Like this. So where I've got lovely lights, add a bit of yellow. So get your paper, scrunch it up. So get a scrunch it up a bit. Like Let's do it quite quick. It's going to dry. Uh, and then we just stick that on. And then take it off. So you get warmer colour. You see. So you can add a bit of colour up with a piece of paper, like a scrunched up, like that, and you can splat it in so you get trees, light, and then there are trees. That's texture. Texture later. <laughs> and these are cooler, so you don't want the warm yellows there. Well, the warm yellows here, and you want the cooler ones in the distance. Yeah, you add a bit of white as well. The, the yellow, the green, so you get this. Lights, just sitting things. Okay. Right, stand back, we need to do some kind of realism, especially in the foreground areas. So some of these buildings are actual blocks of white, yeah, uh, and they've also got light on the roof, so you're getting these simple kind of shapes like this. Right directional sunlight. This comes down into that area as well. Uh, it's actually, oh, it's a car. <laughs> I wonder where it is. So that there is a car, big van going into town. From the left, add sienna. Where's sienna? Use your brush you want. Because here we've got the sides of these uh, rocks. Again, we're painting the rocks. A lot of white pigment. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit wet. Actually, a lot of white pigment. And you got these kind of. White areas. Uh, got quite a bit of white and sienna. Are coming up to the tops of these hills. Like that. Don't forget to add little bits of highlights on the right hand. So you got the buildings going away from you. The lights catching up. I've got a section here, it's kind of quite light, I can leave a window or two. Okay, 
the stakes through there. So that's the yeah, air now. It's just lots of it around this area. Side of the cliff. What do you call a seagull? I call an armoured seagull on the game, that's what it is. Cliff. From it. Um, lovely warm colour here for a building. And then lots of kind of slightly textured material. Come back. Detail in your foreground. Nothing in the background. Okay. Here's the palette knife. Bit of cool colour. Back here. Got a nice kind of texture on that. And here. And then we get down to the cliffs here. Yeah. Bumps. We have a bit warm in on that, sorry. Red sienna and white. That's it. <laughs> so you get this thick pigment, a lot more texture like this. Uh, up here. We've got a few in the cliffs over there, one there, one here. On the side of the mountain, okay. But then we don't want it to be too obvious. Put it on, take it off. <coughs> you know what I mean? Anything in the distance, you can add a bit of blue to it as well. Knock it back so we get these shapes coming out. Like <coughs> I know it's quite difficult to keep track of where you are <coughs> isn't it? but just stand back now and again we take the whole scene in in one go I mean it's coming on now, we can see it building if you get your one head brush out I have got a one head brush but if you get one I've got a very thin one if I pick some blue up and a bit of red, again my favourite dark, and then I can pick out a building and just add a few windows. You start to see what uh, in the car, let's see, back of a car, it's like inside this car, or van, the side of a mountain. is just above the van outside. Little bits of info. All you want to do. I had some Italian I forgot. I'm trying to think of it now. Have a drink. Mm. I quite like that though. Really. I'm going to leave it. I do need to go whiter. So, more white. Less pigment. Less water, sorry. Just here. So we need to create that lovely light on the clouds. Behind that hill, okay? So you're getting the clouds behind the hill. <coughs> you're going to get down to the top of that. It's quite light again. And you've also got things going on there. You can see trees, dark shapes, uh, bits of light. Here's your brush. Keep your rocks nice and jagged. Still got my earplug. My uh, ear plug in. So I don't know if you can hear me now. Um, and then we get this lovely bluey yellow, bluey white again, which is against the uh, that shape. So it changes from white 
to blue, and then it goes to alizarine again. Not alizarine, cerulean. Like that, squint, blend it, tissue or finger, just so it blends into the background. And I'm just picking out these negative spaces, which is a behind the, uh, the box. So you put the white on, and then when it dries, it gets darker. So you find yourself going over the same area. Um, can we do all that really? Time is slow today. Again, pick up some Sierra and white. I've got it mixed, and add it. So we're warming that cloud up a bit. I've also got some purple there. Elizabeth, sorry, which uh, I didn't mean to have, it's just caught. But uh, I'll use it. So. That's giving me this lovely misty quality behind. Like that. <coughs> Alright, so um, Sunday at the door, but I'm not going. Because I'm working. So there you go. We're going to use some more small brushes for texture. All right. And then uh, keeps walking off again. Um, just adding a few of these dark shapes. Got some nice warmth to put in here. So I can use a smaller brush. Use a bit of green, some yellow. Uh, knock it back with sienna. Yeah, and then we want warmth. Light. So here, drag it over here. That, it, Texture of your paper, and then uh, I'm busy. Texture of your paper, you wouldn't give up, would it? Um, <laughs> I'll just start going in lost every time. What time is it? Twenty-two. Why well, they all come in the morning? I'll never know. Bit of greeny, eh? bluey green. Not blue, new green, blue, green. Ah, right. side of the mountain, side of the trees. <coughs> and, that, and just drag that across, see. And that's going to pick up on the texture of your paper, tissue paper. All right. Uh, we've also got some nice warm greeny yellow areas so as I come down here I've got these lovely kind of trees that's coming down into this area see that's just building up all the time this is the bit that I put on with me it's better at doing this when the collage is dry so you don't lift it off that's the shape of a tree all right you can also do it like this that you kind of know splattering techniques all right nice interesting abstract area that's what we're after yeah all these abstract areas keep them together here as well, splattering. Stand back. When you varnish these, they're going to look wonderful. Are they? Yes. A few more darks. Use my brush for this. I need to be greeny blue actually. So I'll add some green to that mix. So I've got some nice shadows on this bit. <coughs> yeah, 
excuse me, side of your brush stops you being fussy. You want to put a block of trees in around the backs of some buildings or even in front of the building like that. Pick a bit where you burn it and put it in as quickly as possible. Like that. If you want to bring anything out that's too dark, add a bit of white. So for instance, the shape around that tree. Logged in. It's a bit lighter. me, for God's sake. Never rains when it pours. <laughs> if you squint, look at the image, you start to see areas that are quite strong now with uh, white. <coughs> and we can actually use the paint, like I said, keep your windows as the underpainting and then keep the sides of the buildings, straight shapes and that. You never put the whole buildings in, yeah? never. But to get that feeling of lots of buildings in the mountains, you have to uh, hint, hint at them. Like this, and that dark uh, trees. So I'm starting here, got quite a bit going on there. So. I see. Use some different blues as well. So I've got some kind of cooler blues for the buildings. Yeah. Don't cover up your colours. You want to keep this right in. You have to do like windows in places and textures in the background. Yeah. Um, stand back. Got plenty done. Plenty done. Very thick pigment now, so I want my palette knife in green, red, and red. Mix those together. Blue, green, and red. All right, and then here, got a lovely kind of. Textures. Coming off the picture. Don't have anything in the foreground. You can help it. Pick up some of this green. Trees. Okay. Again, pick up the green, yellow, and white. <laughs> Try and get the shapes tops of your trees. You can splatter it on. Okay, if you come from the top, splatter it on. Nice strong colour on your foreground. Darks against lights. <coughs> yeah, it looks good through the camera. I've got a lovely depth to it. I'm going to use my palette knife now with some white. Now I've run out of white, so I want some more. I'll put it straight on the flat palette. Right. So you get a straight edge. But because these buildings are catching the light right on the edge, that's what I'm aiming for now. 
little bits of M4. Uh -uh. Uh, and then we'll add a few to the tops of the buildings, catching the sunlight. The white buildings, so you've got here and there, yeah. Uh -huh. Sides as well. Just find a block of colour and add a bit of weight to it. You turn into buildings. Amazing. Amazing. See? <coughs> Tops of these. Nice light ones. Yeah. Good ones. Again, tops of the buildings, just on the edges of, and then you got the same thing happening, some of the rocks, cliffs. Stand back. I'm loath to do too much, actually. I am. Add in a little blush, not me white, a bit of detail. <laughs> Another brush. Using my white again. Quite a bit of water. But as I get to this tops of this cliff. Like I said, you can see. Nice and light. And blended. Blended. You're glazing. Go glazing. Okay. Keep the white, the pure white, for this section. And it's thicker. So it covers up more. And then it blends. See? Squint. Again, just a bit lighter. I'd love to be there doing this outside, yeah. It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? So I've got to touch get in with this when I do again. So if you want to create just little areas of different tones, especially on this, yeah, I've got some runs and drips there. But you can see where there's these like, you know, the chalk cliffs or whatever they are, I don't know. <laughs> Sandstone. So they're kind of blue on the back end. And then they go white and yeah, um, at the front, aren't they? So they're always kind of darker, uh, lighter at the front, aren't uh -huh. Just bits of info. Bit of blue, bit of green. Again, I can add that to the tops. Down here. Tops of your trees. <laughs> uh, 
this section. Keep it dark. Uh, this section is a kind of a bluey, bluey green. Scratch into it. <coughs> then we're coming darker. We finished for that earlier this one. Add a few windows. But because I've left some paper, I'm gonna leave the paper ones and then just add a few dark shapes. Like that. Once you start doing this now. Bigger ones, okay, like that. So as you get in nearer, the windows go bigger. Uh, you might even see a doorway. See, perspective. You can even exaggerate it. Uh -huh. See, and everybody looks at it and thinks, oh, well, there, the buildings. Sections. Not be too fussy. But all the buildings are more or less the same, aren't they? They've all got weight. Well, they're dry, and then I'm gonna finish it off. Stand back. Yeah, like it. Like it. <laughs> some wall thingy trees as well. So a bit more white, makes me green the area. Yellow and green, uh, especially around in here. You need the white to make it more peg, otherwise you won't see it. See? Uh, Kind of impossible to paint, really. Yeah. Some of these areas are uh, golden colour. Just notice. You start seeing a few yellowish sienna in this region. And then a bit more. Right, the seagulls. Beautiful. Right, have a drink again. Stand back. Mm. Quite happy with it, actually. I always do it. So you're happy with it, don't think. Is it finished? What is finished? I don't know. Okay, so do it till you're happy. No 
nobody else. Bless, bless you. <coughs> this is all wet now. I'm going to take my tape off. Have a look at it. If it's okay, I'm going to leave it. If not, I'll varnish it actually. And then uh, I do like my debt. I might add some more white there actually. Let's see what it looks like when it dries. Because it changes tone when it dries. Okay? So, take the tape off. away from here from the picture make the clip some clip turn it see We'll be going there in a few months, or oh, 12 months, I don't know. <laughs> we'll be going anyway, back to Italia. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, I've got to varnish it, which will make it slightly darker, to bring out the darks, and then that. Still add some more what, light, light to my sky, although it works quite well on the camera. An old advertising ploy was to do a painting, <coughs> big one, and then take a photograph and then reduce it so it looks like there's a lot more detail than it actually is, okay? So when things look better, reduce, you see? So that's what you can do if you want it. If you turn it into a stamp, it looks lovely. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to go in the garden now, do a bit, and uh, see you on Monday. Have a lovely weekend, and have a go. All good fun. Beautiful. Thanks now. Bye.